putting your foot down when it pertains to the wearing of a specific hairpiece, feeling the need to put the rest of your castmates through airborne hell for a project, or even going out of your way to plant a smooch on, um, yourself. All undoubtedly qualify as slightly to seriously strange recent movie set occurrences. So with that in mind, I'm Gareth from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 unusual demands made by actors on recent movies. Number 10, Leonardo DiCaprio didn't want the world to see naked Meryl Streep. Don't look up. The iconic Meryl Streep has more than earned her place among the greats and the respect of her many colleagues over the years. However, it was due to the sheer reverence Leonardo DiCaprio had for the record-setting 21-time Academy Award nominee that a rather raunchy and jaw-dropping scene in Adam McKay's recent end-of-the-world comedy hit Don't Look Up was surprisingly deemed somewhat unnecessary by the fellow icon. The Oscar-winning star of the flick went out of his way to push back against the inclusion of Streep's president Orleans, boasting a lower back tattoo and strutting around naked in the film's mid-credits stinger, despite the fact that it was actually a body double seen in the scene. Streep was said to have not even blinked or brought up this being any sort of issue. With the fearless legend being very much game when it came to playing a character who was ultimately dispatched in the buff by a Brontorock. Number 9. Benedict Cumberbatch and Kirsten Dunst refuse to speak. The power of the dog. Benedict Cumberbatch and Kirsten Dunst's fierce commitment to their roles of Phil Burbank and Rose Gordon, respectively, in Jane Campion's The Power of the Dog certainly did not go unnoticed. And while the same could not have been said for Cumberbatch himself, with the Doctor Strange actor infamously holding back on showers for a spell, the film's two leading lights actually went to rather extreme lengths to ensure they didn't catch too many glimpses of one another over the course of the shoot. Explaining to NME his reasoning for largely ignoring Dunce Gordon whilst filming, Cumberbatch would note, I didn't want to be really mean to Kirsten, but I needed to stay in character, so I didn't speak to her on set. She was the same. We were the negative to each other's positive. We were repelled by each other. Number 8. Nicolas Cage wants to kiss himself. The unbearable weight of massive talent. Any film boasting the one and only Nicolas Cage playing a fictionalized version of himself at the center of an action-packed comedy tale which focuses on all things Cage was always destined to be an utterly balmy affair. And sure enough, with this Nick Cage variant of the man behind the moniker, routinely finding himself at odds with his younger, much more rebellious inner self throughout Tom Gormican's flicks, coming during a scene involving Cage's on-screen character bickering with his younger Nicky self, Gormican would reveal to Indie Wire that the massive talent himself pulled him to one side before the shooting of the scene and declared, Guys, I have an idea. I'll French kiss myself. This being in the peak of the pandemic, the director was tasked with figuring out how to pull this off without getting anyone sick. But when Nick Cage requests to plant a smacker on his inner cage, you get this man a stundable. Number 7. Jared Leto Needs a Crutch Morbius Jared Leto was at it again when it was time to mob up for his most recent attempt at making a splash in the super pool. With the leading vampire tasked with convincingly portraying a character suffering from a rare blood disease at points in Morbius, on top of refusing to break the character of Dr. Michael Morbius over the course of shooting, Leto was said to have insisted on using faint crutches to move around set in between takes. Literally pushed to his limit due to said mode of transport largely delaying his shoot, director Daniel Espin Noza would eventually tell Uprox that he was forced to get someone to dump the actor in a wheelchair whenever he required the bathroom as a way of speeding up the overall process. Yet all of the committed hobbling in the world couldn't save this mob in time from disaster on two separate occasions, with Espinosa likely being saved from any further Leto-induced delays thanks to the film's deeply underwhelming box office and critical performance. Number 6. The Rock Doesn't Want a Padded Suit – Black Adam When the time called for Dwayne Johnson to finally bulldoze his way into the DCEU as Black Adam, you had to know that the former WWE star would again put his everything into getting into typically ridiculous shape. But in a development that most definitely did not go down down too well with the great one on the back of said grueling workout regime, the talented costume designers behind the incoming Warner Brothers feature pitched a suit which came with the usually accepted levels of additional super padding. Not content with all his hard graft being masked by the costume, and openly declaring he effing hate this costume, The Rock would tell Total Film, everything was padded so they immediately started tearing and cutting and ripping. When I put that costume on the second time with no padding, just cut in a way where it was enhancing the work that I had put in, I I felt, I'm Black Adam. 
Whether or not coming into the flick in super shape will be enough to thoroughly change the hierarchy of power in the DCEU, though, remains to be seen. Number 5. Sandra Bullock's No Asshole Policy – The Lost City Don't be an a-hole is probably the simplest yet easily forgotten unwritten rule when it comes to creating a pleasant and productive working environment. When it comes to working alongside Academy Award-winning actor and prolific producer Sandra Bullock, however, said rule is anything but unwritten. It's actually something of a law that will see a cast or crew member giving their marching orders should they choose to break it. During an interview alongside fellow The Lost City star Daniel Radcliffe with Australia's The Project TV show, Bullock would note how she is an advocate of the no a-hole policy when it comes to the set under her watch. Going further, the Loretta Sage actor would even reveal that we had a couple of them and they went home. And when assuming that her fellow iconic co-star Brad Pitt must have passed said strict test, Bullock would cheekily respond to her interviewer by joking, well, I don't know about that. Charming. Number 4. Tom Holland Refused to Wear a Wig – Spider Man No Way Home While the perks that come with becoming a part of the sprawling Marvel Cinematic Universe no doubt outweigh the few negatives, that still hasn't stopped the odd superhero actor from putting their foot down when faced with a particularly frustrating demand from the super studio. In the case of Spider-Man star Tom Holland, said annoying request came in the form of his hairstyle coming into his most recent spell of web-slinging in No Way Home, with the actor being put in an awkward position on the back of changing up his weave for Uncharted. As the British Peter Parker actor would reveal to Esquire, his cooler Nathan Drake's styling initially wasn't deemed suitable for the much nerdier Marvel personality, but upon being given a strange wig that was just around the sides, Holland decided to push back as an actor for the first time in his life. I'm not effing wearing that wig, I'm going to have shorter hair and you're going to have to deal with it, were Holland's unwavering orders. So all of Marvel's additional surreal side fuzz wig work ultimately went to waste. Number 3. Paul Dano Needs 200 Takes The Batman There's nothing wrong with being something of a perfectionist. But there's proofreading an important document a few more times just to be safe before clicking send. And then there's requesting to perform a scene a whopping 200 times in the pursuit of nailing a cinematic performance. According to the Batman director Matt Reeves, that's roughly how many takes it took for his chosen Riddler, Paul Dano, to deliver the goods in one particular scene in his recent version of All Things Gotham. As revealed in a Hollywood Reporter piece on the Batman central antagonist, Dano would routinely request another chance to bring a different variation of his consistently captivating performance to the table, while shooting a scene depicting the Riddler conversing with Robert Pattinson's bats on a phone through video chat. But far from being driven mad by the relentless thespian though, Reeves would confess how he admired how he was so inventive and creative, whilst also noting how he's also very critical of himself. That's one way of putting it. Number 2. Anya Taylor-Joy's Idea of Self-Defense – The Northman Of the many shocking and deeply unexpected beats that can be found raging through Robert Eggers' recent Northman epic, arguably the most unsettling of the lot came in a moment completely devoid of any violent Vikings bulldozing through a village with an axe in hand. With Anya Taylor-Joy's Olga of the Birch Forest faced with the disturbing prospect of being raped by a despicable male, the fierce Slavic sorceress resorts to sticking her hand between her legs and wiping her menstrual blood on the potential attacker. Yep, it happens. Far from being a part of the script from the get-go, however, Eggers would later reveal to Vanity Fair that this was actually a moment straight from the mind of the actor herself. And when pressed on summing up the effect of this shocking form of self-defense within his frequently gritty and savage Viking drama, the visionary director would simply claim it was great. With Eggers and cinematographer Jaren Blask being famed for their strict process of largely sticking to pre-planned storyboards, the former's willingness to take on Taylor Joy's inspired suggestions and likely change up the original plans for the scene tells you all you need to know about how much the director trusted his freakishly talented star. Number one, Tom Cruise's need for flight school and no CGI. Top Gun Maverick. Tom Cruise's need for his co-stars to feel the genuine speed undoubtedly paved the way for arguably the greatest legacy sequel to date. Designing his very own all-encompassing aviation training for all the actors, according to Phoenix actor Monica Barbero, producer Jerry Bruckheimer would also note in a behind-the-scenes look at Top Gun Maverick that the stars were put through three months of grueling training, with everything from being aboard jets at high speed to a challenging underwater program being a part of the process. The filmmaker's commitment to throwing the likes of Miles Teller and the gang into the jet-fuel reality of the situation no doubt stemmed from Cruz's initial demand 
Kevin agreeing to return to the role of Maverick. In short, as Cruz would reveal to Empire later down the road, after years of wondering how in the hell this sequel could ever be achieved, I'll do it if, meaning I'm not going to do the CGI stuff. In the end, Cruz and co undoubtedly proved there's still life in the practical side of big screen movie making yet, with Maverick now sitting as the star's most successful box office endeavor to date. What a ride. And that's our list. Not many other unusual demands made by actors on recent movies. Let us know all about them in the comment section right down below, and do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Also, be sure to head on over to whatculture.com and find some more incredible articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. I have been Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you, as always, for clicking on this lovely video today, and hopefully I will see your brilliant faces very, very soon. Bye-bye!